Hello, this is Brad Tallis with NextGen Solutions, and welcome to this week's Fusion Friday. So today's topic is all about boundary fill. Boundary fill is one of those commands that people are like, what is it? What is it used for? And how do you use it? So hopefully in these examples, we'll clarify some of those questions. So boundary fill, you can kind of think of as filling in a region using uh, surfaces or planes, for example, to kind of fill in an area and turn that into a solid body. So you can see in this example here, I've got some surfaces and I've got um, an offset plane, I've got an origin plane, and I could, in surfacing, I could come in and trim all of these surfaces back. Then I'd have to create a patch on the top surface. I'd have to create a patch on the bottom surface. Then I'd have to stitch all that together. And then it would finally turn into a solid object. And this is where boundary fill simplifies things. So let's take a look. So I'm going to click on the Create menu and then Boundary Fill and it's asking to select some tools. So I'm gonna start by selecting these surfaces. And so basically what we're gonna to want to do is keep this area inside here. And then I need to kind of define, I've defined kind of the vertical walls. Now I need to define the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna select um, this um, origin plane because it's kind of right on the bottom. And I'll select this offset plane right here. And you can see, we get a nice preview of that boundary fill where it's using those surfaces and it's using those planes to define the overall shape. So the next thing it's asking for is to select these cells and that's this little icon you see right here. And in this example, we only have one cell. In the next example, you'll see multiple cells. So I'm gonna say select cells and click on that and say, okay, and it's going to turn this into a solid body. In fact, if I turn off um, the sketches and the construction planes, etc., we can see that we now have a solid body that we can add fillets to. Um, if we wanted to, for example, it's just like a regular solid body. Okay, so let's take that to the next level. I'm going to undo back and I'm gonna add in an extra surface. So I have a, a curved surface like so. Again, I could use surfacing and trim and all that kind of stuff, but boundary fill is so much faster. So I'm gonna use the boundary fill command again, select those three surfaces and that bottom surface, and you can see the nice preview that we're getting. So we're creating kind of a um, you know mouse looking type object, for example. So let's turn those off. And we are now left with a shape that looks like this. So that is kind of the basic idea of what boundary fill is used for. So in this next example, um, I have a vase and a lot of people use boundary fill to find out like the volume of something. Like I wanna know how much water or liquid um, this particular vase would hold. So I'm gonna, I need to create a shape that fills in this area. And this is where boundary fill excels. So I need to create a second body. So I'm gonna just create a cylindrical primitive. And let's, I'll just make it larger than the vase. Uh, we want this to be a new body. And I'm just gonna have it go up to the top of the vase like so. Then I'll use boundary fill and select the two tools. So one of the tools is gonna to be the vase, and then the other tool is gonna to be the cylinder. Now here's where you see we have multiple cells. Um, and basically it's allowing me to select which one uh, do I want to keep. And I will be honest, I find this a little bit confusing, and I think this is uh, where people are like, how do you use this? you're basically saying, which region do I wanna keep? And there's a couple different options in here. So obviously there's the region inside the vase. Okay, that's one of them. Well, the other one would actually be, 
you know, inside the walls of the vase, almost like you did uh, an intersect, for example. Another option would be to keep everything on the outside of the vase. So which one do I click? And it's hard to tell. Like if you highlight or click on any of these, you don't really see anything change. Um, so what I typically do is I select one of them. And if I don't get the result that I want, I can just edit that feature. So, so let's take a look what I mean by that. So I'm going to select that first checkbox and say, okay. And it created a new body. So if I turn off the other two bodies, you can see that first check that I kept was um, this, basically the outside of that cylinder. So that's not what I wanted. But I can come in here and edit that um, feature in the timeline. And let's just unselect, let's select the next one and see what result we get. And it looks just like the vase. So this is the example where it kind of kept the inside walls of the vase. So that's not what I wanted. So let's do this third one here. I'll say OK. And this is looking a little bit more like what I'm expecting. So if I turn um, the original vase back on, sure enough, you can see that it has created or filled in that whole region. Um, so if I turn off the body five, we can see we now have that object there. And if I come in here and go into my properties, we can actually see what the volume is, um, what the mass is. Now, right now it says it's steel. So let's change that material. So I'm gonna come in here and change physical material. And one of them is liquid. So let's just assign uh, water to that body. Now, if I were to come in and let me close this out, I'll say close. If I were to do the properties uh, again, we can see the mass makes more sense because the material is water. Uh, and so now it says that's 31 ounces. So, so that's how you find the volume. Now, what's kind of cool about this is if I came back and edited my cylinder and brought that down, let's just say, kind of toward the middle of the neck, for example, and I say, okay, I get the same result. So if I turn off the vase, we can see there's the volume of the water. If we um, do the properties, we can see um, the uh, mass is now 13 instead of 23 or whatever it was before. So hopefully you found those tips useful. If you did, please give a thumbs up or leave a comment in the comments section below. Also, if you have any ideas for future topics, please email them to me at bradtallis at nextgensolutions.com. And I look forward to seeing you on the next Fusion Friday.